Next up, I have Lala Kent on the show. I'm so excited to have you, Lala. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I am too. And you know what? To talk about your recovery journey and your book, I just got through reading it, an incredible book. You were so open and raw. So first of all, let's, let's talk about how it was for you to write this book. The writing process was amazing. And I got to revisit so many moments of like my childhood and it was therapeutic and just venturing into when I was drinking or when my dad passed away. And there were so many moments that I would sit there and battle, like, do I put this in? Am I sharing too much? But the goal was always the same. If I can get one person to read this and feel less alone, then I've accomplished everything I've wanted and more. And I did have many people say, I don't think you're going to get the response that you think you're going to get with some of these stories. And I said, I do not care. There's someone somewhere that's going to read this and feel like they have someone to, to look at and go, okay, she knows what I'm going through. And that was my only goal from the start. That's incredible because Believe me, there's a lot of people out there that can relate and, you know, you're always going to have someone that tries to discourage you, but you were guided to do this and, you know, you, you spoke from the heart. And so let's talk about, I want to talk about some of the things that you did bring up in the book. Mm -hmm. And I think this will help other people. So I know you were having fun and you were drinking and you were able to, you know, pick up pick up a drink or put it down. Right. But when your father passed away, you, you experienced such grief Mm -hmm. and this is what pushed you over. And this is how you dealt with his grief. So let's talk about that a little bit. And did you ever recover during that time uh, from your drinking or just did it continue? So I, I'm the type of person that believes that alcoholism is a progressive disease. And Mm -hmm. I think there were many things in my life, big or small, that put me on a path to becoming an alcoholic. When my dad passed away, it was from the moment I woke up to the time that I passed out, we were Mm -hmm. drinking because losing my dad was the greatest loss. You know, I was so close to him and I just felt in that moment, my world had crumbled and I mm-hmm. didn't have the tools to deal with it. And yeah. I, I continue drinking and it's so interesting. I'm very into the universe and my higher power. And I, I have really had a profound understanding of my higher power since getting sober. And my last drink was exactly six months to the day of my dad's passing. And I just remember waking up, I hadn't, I hadn't grieved properly because I didn't know Mm -hmm. how to, I was numbing, but I wasn't dealing with the fact that my, the king of my family was no longer, he was just a memory. Mm -hmm. And I just woke up on October 22nd and I felt my dad with me and I knew I'm taking my life back right now because I have the power to do that. And I'm admitting that I'm powerless over alcohol and I'm turning it over to something more powerful than I am. And I haven't had a drink since. And it's every day, I, I, it's every day I have to put work into my sobriety, but it comes before everything it comes before yeah. my daughter comes before my family, because without it, I am not a productive human being and I'm worthless to everyone around me. And that's mm-hmm. why it was so important to share these crazy stories in this book that a lot of people read and they're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But so many people around me were saying, you're not an alcoholic. I don't understand. And I'm like, we yeah. need to share what I do when I'm under the influence because it's not normal. It's a huge decision. Um, but I mean, you are, you are a true example of the gifts and the spirituality that are given through sobriety. So, yeah. And so, and congratulations. Let's talk about that baby ocean. How, 
how exciting. Did she just turn one? She just turned one on March 15th. Oh my goodness. How precious. I know. So how it's, is, how's ocean doing? Oh, Happy she, birthday. Thank you. We had a fantastic birthday. I know she won't remember it, but I remember it. And I can't wait to show her pictures. Like I am not great at putting birthdays together or any party for that matter. And uh -huh. with a lot of help, we pulled it off. You know, she's, she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And everything that I do now, I do for her. And every decision I make, she's, she's the first person I think about. Yeah. And yeah, she, and I got it's very incredible. Lucky. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And just to watch her, you know, I look back, it was her birthday. And I looked back on photos of when she was just brand new. And I got so sad because I couldn't believe that it had gone by so quickly. But then I see her in the little person she's becoming. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much to look forward to. So let's talk about your experience in reality television. And, you know, Lala was born. And so Lala versus Lauren. And what was that experience like for you? And you were so open about it in your book, which is incredible. But what could you tell us that people that don't know how did that change you? Well, you know, I was, I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I was always, you know, Lauren Burningham and like people around me understood like my sense of humor and that I clapped back. And it was, it was never something that I battled with people as far as like defending who I am. And then I step onto Vanderpump Rules and all of the sudden, everyone has an issue with who I am and who I've been for a long time. And I, mm -hmm. I just knew if I, if I was going to survive in this and keep in mind, I've always wanted to be in entertainment. I did not picture myself on reality TV, but I like being in front of a camera. And yeah. I, I knew that there was no other path for me because I wasn't interested in anything else. And so when I step onto this show, and I'm like, there's nowhere else for me to go. This, this is it. This is what you want. You, you've gone back home before. You've done the, you know, the college thing. You don't want to do it. So I almost had mm -hmm. to become, be myself, but put a shell over me, which is where Lala kind of came to be. Because I'm telling you what, these people would have, you know, eaten me for lunch had I just been Lauren from Utah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I encourage everybody, whether you're stepping into an interview or, you know, even if you're going on a date, like try to take all of the pieces where you feel confident and beautiful and no one can break you, even if that has to be like a little alter ego and then save yeah. those sensitive pieces when people deserve it. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you. So let's talk about some great things that are going on for you. Miss Entrepreneur, you've got uh, Give Them Lala Beauty, Skin, and Baby. So tell us about that experience and about each one of these lines. I started Give Them Lala Beauty almost six years ago. I always knew that nothing lasts forever as far as the show that I'm on. And I just wanted something that I could potentially build into something great and have forever, no matter if I'm on TV or not. And, mm -hmm. you know, it did, it did really well. And just like most of us, once we get a little bit of something, we always want more. And we ventured into skin, which has been great. And then the second I found out I was pregnant, I was like, this makes sense. My friend from back home, who I've been friends with since the time we were born, um, has always wanted to start a baby line. And it never made sense because I didn't have children. So I called her and said, let's start a little family business. And here we are providing all the basics for your little ones. <laughs> I would love for you to just give a little inspiration to someone that's out there that maybe is on the fence. Do I need help? Do I not need help? What could you say to them? Ooh, I feel like if you're ever on the fence, I know sobriety can be a very intimidating life choice 
I would pick up the big book. I'm in the program. I think it's amazing. Um, and just start highlighting things that resonate with you. And that, that'll give you your answer, but give sobriety a chance because I wish I could show people like they're, they're a little glass ball of what I know. your future holds, because even though life will still happen, it's manageable and that's worth everything. Yeah. I think, I think we are the magic mirror when we show how we're li living, we're helping mm -hmm. others through that. I agree. So, yeah. So Lala, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been an honor having you and thank you for sharing and good luck with the book. It's awesome. Guys, you got to get out there and read thank it. You. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. You too, Lala. Bye-bye.